Isipresso are both famous and kind of notorious for producing a lot of different models. It's only one year ago since I last time made a video about the different grinders in the Isipresso lineup and already now I feel like I have to redo it because uh, there's simply a lot of new grinders coming out and small updates uh, to the ones that were already there. So today we're obviously going to talk a lot about the new X-Pro model. We're also going to dive deep into the ZP6 Special and uh, then we'll also compare them to the K-Max and the Q2, talk about the updates that's been to uh, that model and also briefly touch upon the K-Ultra. So if you're a little bit uh, confused about the Easy Preso grinders, then uh, make sure to watch all of this video because that will hopefully clear things up for you. And if you are especially interested in uh, how these two grinders compare uh, flavor wise, then uh, we'll also go really deep into that. So uh, that's the program for today. Let's first start with a brief overview. So the X Pro is a brand new model that's not even available in many countries yet. It has an external adjustment wheel, which is uh, super convenient and easy to use. It looks a bit different from the design used in the K series, but it works more or less the same way. This grinder also comes with a new heptagonal burr. It's smaller than the burr used in the K series, but it's uh, still relatively fast and works for both filter coffee and espresso. The handle is a bit shorter than on the K series, uh, some people will actually like that, it's more similar to the Commandante, but uh, personally I prefer the leverage from using a longer handle myself. The X-Pro also comes with a screw-on catch cup, again I'm used to the K-Max, so I prefer the magnets uh, on that model, uh, but uh, I guess this is also an okay solution. Besides that, the X-Pro also has a unique calibration design compared to other Easy Person models. It makes it very easy to uh, reset the grinder to zero because you can simply just take off the adjustment ring like this and then when you place it back on then uh, you can decide the setting. If I am to compare this one to the rest of the lineup you could sort of say it's a mid-ranger. It's a little bit smaller than the grinders from the K-series, a little bit bigger than the Q2 and it also fits somewhere between these two extremes uh, when it comes to price. So uh, this grinder here probably competes with uh, grinders like the JX and JX Pro. However, I would probably say that uh, in terms of flavor you get a little bit more with the X Pro. So uh, even though it's uh, thought of as a mid-range grinder, uh, it's quite close to uh, what other manufacturers would call premium. The next new grinder you're going to meet is this one here, the ZP6 Special. In spite of its very fancy name, Essentially, it's just a K-Pro grinder with a completely new burr inside, which is uh, very focused on pour or coffee. This burr has been used in some cult favorite models called JS, KS and Z Pro. These grinders have previously only been available in Taiwan and China, and there's always been a lot of chatter about these models on uh, different coffee forums over the years. And uh, finally, it's been made available internationally. So when it comes to the ZP6 Special, the highlight is really the burr set on the inside. Since the grinder has so much in common with the K-Pro, you could say it's the same uh, pros and cons as that one. You have this really nice long handle, you have the external adjustment wheel, and then you have the screw on catch cup, which is a little bit of a letdown compared to the K-Max, but again, it still gets the job done. My main problem with the K-Pro has always been that it's a little bit slim compared to the K-Plus and K-Max, and it has this long handle, so for that reason it's very easy to uh, get it out of balance and then it will tip over like that if you just uh, knock it accidentally. It has a little rubber mat attached, which makes it a little bit less likely to slide around, but still, compared to the K-Max and K-Plus, it's probably a little bit more accident prone. That being said, it's still a grinder with a great user experience. It's certainly a lot better than uh, most of these OG premium hand grinders, uh, such as the Leader Free, uh, Commandante C40, uh, NUC, uh, Air Grind, Felt Grind, uh, Hila 101. So yeah, it's still a very decent grinder. One thing you need to be aware of is that this grinder cannot do espresso. So this should probably only be on your radar if you're really interested in uh, getting the best out of your puro or coffee. 
It can still grind relatively fine. I would say certainly fine enough to be used for something like a super fine aero press or mocha pot, but uh, you can simply not build up enough pressure to use it in an espresso machine, not even a manual espresso machine. So it has that limit. But since the flavor profile is the main attraction of this grinder, we'll talk about it more a little bit later. Next up, we have the Easy Presso Q2. This has been a long-term favorite for people who want a small grinder that's great for travel. Uh, the construction is uh, really solid. Uh, it fits inside an aero press, so it's kind of nice to uh, bring on the road. Or if you just have small hands or prefer something a little bit more nimble on the kitchen counter, then again, it's an ideal choice. The big news in the Q2 series is that the burr has been uh, updated. So the previous version came with a pentagonal burr and uh, now this has been uh, changed to a heptagonal burr. Actually, it's the same set that is inside the X-Pro and uh, that set is uh, quite a bit more clear in terms of flavor compared to the pentagonal version. It's also a bit faster and it can also grind pretty well for espresso. So actually, this upgrade for the Q2 makes it just an even more interesting grinder because it's still sold at that uh, relatively low price point, I think around 100 US dollars. And for that kind of money, it's going to be very difficult, if not impossible, to find a grinder with a better flavor profile. But again, let's dive into that uh, flavor profile a little bit later. Oh, and I should also mention that this is the old version. I don't have the new one with the new burr set. So we have to use the X-Pro as an example. And then uh, I think it's pretty safe to assume that the flavor profile of the X-Pro and the new Q2 will be uh, almost similar, if not identical. And then I also have the K-Max here in front of me, not because it's a new grinder. I included it in my uh, last uh, roundup of the Easy Peso grinder. I'll put a link up here so you can see what I thought about it back then. Uh, but basically, I still feel the same. This is a really well-rounded grinder. Uh, the user experience is just uh, amazing. It has the external adjustment, which I would say is uh, best in the industry. It has the magnetic catch cup that works really well. And uh, it grinds really fast. So uh, whether you use it for pour over or espresso, it's just a really smooth, fast uh, grinding experience. And the flavor profile is uh, also good for light roasted coffees. Uh, so uh, yeah, it's a really versatile grinder that can uh, serve you well for almost everything. Oh, I should say there is a little bit of news regarding the K-Max. So Easy Peso came out with a new model called K-Ultra, also uh, very recently. And uh, essentially this is a K-Max model with a slightly more rounded shape uh, at the edges. And then it has a foldable handle instead of this uh, nice one here. Uh, it also has a slightly different um, axle. So the adjustment is uh, 20 microns instead of 22 microns. So essentially there's no real difference in the adjustment, even though it might uh, seem that way. The difference between 22 and 20 is uh, negligible in uh, daily use. To be completely honest, I'm not gonna focus too much on the K-Ultra. As I think it's mainly a backup plan that Easy Preso has. Uh, as you might be aware, there are some uh, legal uh, battles going on at the moment. Another grinder manufacturer has tried to uh, prevent Easy Preso from selling their grinders in uh, Europe. And uh, a big part of the case is the shape of the handle. So I think by having a foldable handle, they might be able to get around that. So yeah, the K-Ultra is a little bit of a distraction. I don't really see any reason to spend much time on that grinder. Okay, time for a speed test. I've loaded 20 grams uh, into each of these grinders. It's a light roast Ethiopian coffee, and the grind setting is uh, around what I would call a really fine uh, drip coffee or a standard error press setting. So uh, we'll time each grinder and then we'll get a feeling for how they grind, the speed and uh, the ergonomics.
it does require much more uh, torque and uh, muscle power to use compared to the X-Pro. So uh, that speed also comes with a certain sacrifice. I will say the X-Pro feels almost as hard to use as the um, K-Max and it's probably because of that uh, shorter handle and the ergonomics is not, I don't know, it doesn't feel as good in the hand as the K-Max when you're grinding. But all in all, uh, even these two grinders here, I feel they are fast enough for most people in daily use. Now let's do a little uh, taste comparison to get a better understanding of the differences between the grinders. So now I'm just gonna brew the Ethiopian coffee beans I've just ground. Uh, I'll use a very simple recipe with the Hario drip assist uh, in order to avoid any manual errors. So I'll try to brew uh, each cup uh, exactly the same way. Okay, it's that time. Okay, blooming done, and then pour two hundred. And now I'm just gonna mark each cupping bowl underneath and then we'll do a blind test and then we'll see if the coffees taste like I think they're going to taste. Okay, for KMAX, set for set P6 and an X here. Going to turn around. Okay, and to be honest, I have absolutely no idea which one is which anymore. Okay, let's taste. Hmm, quite nice. Good balance, but a little bit thin. Mm. Hmm. A little bit sharper edge, this one here. <clears throat> wow, this is very difficult. Also good. Very similar. <clears throat> Honestly, they are all really, really similar. This one is a little bit more uh, juicy, a little bit more acidic. If it's like uh, it's been in my testing, uh, this could be the X-Pro. It has had a tendency to uh, show more acidity compared to the other two grinders, uh, which are a little bit more restrained. Mm. Okay, as the coffees are cooling down more, uh, I feel like this one, the aftertaste might not be as uh, prominent as this one here. So I think this could be the K-Max and this could be the ZP6, at least that would uh, fit with my tasting so far. And then the one in the middle, 
which is a bit more acidity forward. Could be the X-Pro. Um, but again, I'm not completely sure because all these coffees are actually very similar. I think as the cups cool down, this one here is uh, slightly more enjoyable. I'm just going to put it up here. Um, this one is very similar, but um, it's a little bit more. Um, the aftertaste is not as long. Uh, and this one here has a little bit more uh, a sharpness to it. So I'm gonna guess that this is the X-Pro and this is the K-Max. Let's see. Yes, X-Pro. And then come on, K-Max. Yes, this is the K-Max. And then, I guess I don't even have to look, but this is the, the set P6. So I'm pretty happy doing this uh, tasting uh, live on the camera. It uh, fits quite neatly with uh, what I've been experiencing so far. So when hot and warm, the difference is uh, very minimal. They're all very good. Uh, but then as they cool down more, uh, the ZP6 retains uh, more elegance and more balance compared to the K-Max and uh, Expo. Over the last couple of weeks, I've done many blind tastings exactly like this. Uh, the same protocol, same recipe with the Hario Drip Assist and it has been uh, quite consistent that the uh, ZP6 has come out on top. In those tests it has also been interesting that the ZP6 has a slightly higher TDS, a higher extraction compared to the other grinders even though the um, drawdown has been a little bit faster usually. So it seems like there's something going on, it's a little bit more consistent and uh, that explains the higher extraction and the faster drawdown. I have been doing uh, some sifting tests and in those tests it's actually uh, very hard to uh, distinguish between the ZP6 and the X-Pro. They both seem to be uh, more uniform uh, to produce less fines compared to the K-Max, uh, but the difference is not huge. Especially if you compare to flat burrs, the jump from uh, these grinders to the flat burrs is quite significant. And then the differences that are between the conical grinders is usually not that huge. Since the ZP6 has been the most outstanding grinder in uh, my tests, I also uh, put it against some uh, flat burrs. So uh, in the first tasting test, I put it against the multipurpose SSP as well as the cast burrs from the SSPs, uh, so both uh, 64 millimeters. And in that test, it uh, lost quite significantly. So when you taste it next to flat burrs, everything just feels a little bit more muted compared to the flat burr models. Uh, the berries, uh, the fruits are a lot more forward, a lot more singular and long lasting, whereas the ZP6 uh, is a bit more restrained a bit more neutral in its uh, presentation. Still a good cup, but it uh, just matters a lot what you compare it to. I have also done some tests against some uh, less uh, uniform flat burrs. So for instance, the DF83 with the Mesa burrs. And even though those uh, performed better in a sifting test, uh, I did prefer the ZP on the table. So after all my tests, my conclusion has been that uh, it seems like the ZP6 does perform better compared to uh, most conical grinders and uh, it can even beat some flat burrs. Let's say the flat burrs have espresso geometry or they are not uh, perfectly aligned, then uh, it's still going to do very well. However, I don't really think it can compete with these more uh, specialized flat burrs, especially when the alignment is uh, good. And when I've been doing sifting tests, the results have also seemed to back it up that there's simply a quite big difference between the best flat burrs and conical grinders. The X-Pro has also done really well uh, grinding for pour over. I will say that it uh, usually has a little bit more of a narrow uh, bandwidth on the tongue. It's a bit more acidity forward, uh, which can actually be uh, really nice on uh, some coffees like let's say these uh, washed mild coffees uh, scoring 83 to 85 points, it can usually give them a little bit of uh, punchiness uh, that is uh, quite nice. But I will say the ZP6 feels more balanced uh, and the K-Max also feels more balanced. 
it's not to say that the X Pro is uh, bad compared to the K Max. I think on some coffees, I would probably prefer the cups from the X Pro. And in the sifting tests, it also seems to be a little bit more of a consistent grinder compared to the K Max. K Max is also very balanced. I would probably put it between uh, X Pro and ZP6 in terms of uh, that acidity balance ratio. But usually as it cools down, it becomes more obvious that uh, it's a little bit more watery, a little bit less extracted compared to the ZP6. Before making this video, I also asked some of my uh, subscribers on YouTube if they had any questions uh, regarding the grinders. And I actually got a lot of interesting ones. So uh, let's just run through them uh, one by one. So Gerald asks, how forgiving are they to dial in versus KMAX, SSP, multi-purpose, SSP, cast, commandante, etc. Compared to all the flat burrs, I will say that uh, these grinders are very forgiving. Uh, usually conical burrs have a wider sweet spot compared to flat burr grinders. And uh, that's especially the case for hand grinders when you use them for drip coffee. So uh, usually you can get good results, both uh, going uh, coarse or fine. So yeah, pretty consistent. Andre asks, would you recommend going coarser with more agitation or going finer with less? Well, I will say for ZP6, it's a quite good idea to go fine because it seems to have a fast drawdown time. So if you want to avoid having a coffee finish under two minutes, then you can go quite fine and you're not gonna experience any astringency. Okay, next up, Sean asks, I was told the X-Pro has some serious flaws after some use. I think it's about the new recalibration design. The pin seems to break off easily. Uh, Sean, I haven't heard about that. Uh, and I'm sure Easy Presso would uh, fix it, send you a new uh, adjustment dial if uh, there are any problems. But uh, it should also be said that this is a very new grinder. Not that many people have it yet. So if there are some problems, I'm sure it would come out uh, sooner. But uh, at the moment, I haven't heard anything. Next up, Sebastian asks, set P6 versus high clarity flats, what's your verdict? Well, I will say high clarity flats are still a bit more of everything. So uh, they can just accentuate flavor notes uh, way more clearly than uh, something like the set P6 can do. But that doesn't mean that uh, the set P6 doesn't offer a lot in terms of uh, clarity and flavor. I think if you compare it to 99.99 .99 of coffee drinkers, uh, the ZP6 will uh, give you more clarity, but uh, it's still not up there with the flat burst, unfortunately. Cha1NY, uh, I think the name is, asks, what click does your ZP6 burst stop rubbing when cranking the handle hard? And were you able to make espresso with the ZP6? Uh, no, I haven't been able to make espresso with the ZP6. I don't think uh, anybody uh, will be able to do it. Uh, there is some burr rub at around uh, setting uh, 0.5 or 6, uh, around that range. A subscriber named Bogdan asks, I have the X-Pro. I'm curious about body complexity and sweetness versus ZP6. Also, if ZP6 has more stabilization. I think for stabilization, it's the same between the two. Uh, all the Easy Presser grinders have a, a really solid uh, stabilization system. So I don't think there's much that can go wrong in terms of uh, stabilization with these grinders. In terms of flavor, I think they're mostly down to the shape of the burr set. As I mentioned, X-Pro tends to be more acidity forward, uh, more centered on a few notes. Uh, a little bit more fresh and uh, sparkling, whereas uh, ZP6 is a more uh, balanced grinder. Okay, I think it's time to wrap this one up. I will say for drip coffee, uh, the ZP6 is just uh, really very good in uh, most of my tests. It has uh, been beating the, the two other grinders here, uh, but they are all uh, really good for conical grinders. So in terms of uh, conical grinders, I think they are some of the best out there. Uh, certainly, they are all better than uh, electrical conical grinders. It's not a long time since I uh, compared K-Max to the FEMA book, a very expensive uh, conical grinder with uh, low RPM, and the K-Max was simply better. So I think it says a lot uh, about the other two grinders uh, that uh, they seem to outperform K-Max uh, slightly when it comes to drip coffee. Are they up there with the best of the best flat burrs? 
No, not quite, but uh, they are also quite a bit more affordable and uh, they are a lot less uh, headache. You don't really have to worry about alignment. They're good for single dosing. Uh, the workflow is nice. So uh, you do get a lot for your money with these grinders here. So if you're sitting out there and you're wondering which grinder you should get, I will say if you're mainly doing uh, drip coffee, then the ZP6 is a good bet. Uh, the torque, the force it requires to grind is also less compared to these two. So maybe if you have some uh, problems with your wrist, then it's also worth considering. If you want a real good all-round grinder, both these here can uh, do really well. I find the ergonomics of the K-Max is just superior compared to the X-Pro. So I wouldn't enjoy doing uh, espresso with the X-Pro every day, whereas I wouldn't have a problem doing it with the K-Max. In my uh, comparisons, in terms of uh, espresso taste, I have also preferred the K-Max slightly over the X-Pro. Uh, they're both good. The X-Pro tends to be a little bit sharper in its flavor profile. And while that can be enjoyable for a pour over, I find for espresso, the K-Max is just uh, sweeter and more rounded. If you're on a budget, however, then the X-Pro is really easy to recommend. I believe it's going to be sold around the same price as the JX, the JX Pro. So uh, at that price range, I don't really think you can find anything better than this grinder. Oh, and I should also say for all the travel people who want a compact grinder that does well, the Q2 now comes with the X-Pro Burr. So uh, don't sleep on this one as well. It's going to really uh, punch above its weight. So there you have it. These are my thoughts about Easy Presso Grinders going into 2023. Uh, there's a lot of uh, good models available nowadays. Uh, you can either be sad that there are some new great options or you can see it as a good thing that there's some innovation going on in the grinder business. Did you just buy another Easy Presso model and are you annoyed that uh, they are already producing uh, new, seemingly uh, better grinders? Or do you just uh, embrace the innovation? Uh, I'd be curious to hear what you think about that. If you have any questions or comments, then uh, leave them down below and uh, then we can have a discussion. Oh, and by the way, if you still want to know more about the old Easy Presso models, the JMAX, the JX, then uh, check out this video here where I uh, do a roundup uh, similar to this style here and talk about the old models as well. So click that video and then I'll see you over there.